Okay, so I want to know about moonshine. Well, what I'll tell you is this came from the hills somewhere. Did it? So is it legit, legit it's, moonshine? This is real. Oh, that's not bad. That is actually. Wow, it's really drinkable. Buttery and smooth. That's got to be yeah. like a low proof. They got even a little bit of a cinnamon. They had to have proofed that down. The terminology is very, very confusing. Mm -hmm. Okay. White dog, clear spirit, new make, white lightning. Yeah. Like all these different things. Are they all just, moonshine? Are they all just? They're all nicknames for new make. Yeah, I see. they're all nicknames for an unaged grain-based spirit. Okay. So can I just say moonshine to cover the bases for all? You can for slang. It used to be that was a term for illegal stuff, which actually this is technically, actually is moonshine. Yeah. This is totally it's illegal. Super illegal. We just can't tell you who did it. Okay, let's go learn about moonshine. Hey, we got heaters on the deck. Ooh, I've only assembled two of them and I only have a propane tank for one, but that one we ran on Saturday. Oh yeah. Uh, and it covered all the way to the second table. Hey, what's going on? So moonshine is it whiskey. Not technically. So. Uh, it's a sp clear spirit. <laughs> but I don't want to call it a clear spirit. Because it's made from grains, if you age it or let it sit or filter it through wood of some kind, you could technically call it a whiskey. So for any, any amount of time? Yeah, any amount of time. Like five minutes. So like, for example, notice here's Ranger Creek. White, they just name it, right? This is the stuff that ends up in their final product. Right. But the technical classification is spirit distilled from corn, rye, and barley. Okay. Right? Now, the other three I have over here are actual corn. All right? So you got Nelson's Green Briar, Tennessee handmade white whiskey, but it's technically distilled from bourbon mash. Okay. Right? And so that means it's not a corn whiskey, it's actually the same mash bill they're using in their bourbon. Then you have a new make, corn whiskey, 100% corn. And then you have what people are probably thinking of when they think moonshine. Right, the, jug. <laughs> the jug. The classic Flat Valley moonshine. Right, now this is 100% straight corn whiskey. Now that means technically a straight corn whiskey means it can be aged in uncharred or used oak. Uncharred oak. I mean. That cleared up nothing for me. No, it's, it's super vague because nobody knows what to do with it. <laughs> so, uh, so here's my questions about Moonshine specifically. You and I went to the Balcones uh, Distillery right. over in Waco, I think it was a few, a few months ago. Right. Seems like a few months ago. And we were able to get some of their unaged clear spirit right off the line. Like right coming at the still. Right at the still, coming mm -hmm. right off of the hose. One, it was very, very, very warm. Two, what surprised me is how that liquid turns into their single malt because it was very, very different. Yeah. Guava is the word that they used. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. It's it's like a very fruity really guava. Fruity. Yeah, and, and sweet. Yeah. Very sweet. Because about, you know, 70, 80% of the taste of what goes into a whiskey is gonna be from the barrels. 70 to 80%, that's still like 30 to 20%. That's what starts and makes it all the way through. I am very curious to experience and, and learn more about the beginning of, of moonshine. I'm gonna call it moonshine. I like to say, I just like, like saying moonshine. I don't care if I'm wrong. The beginnings of no, a, a moonshine that gets aged in a wooden thing and at the end, is there any resemblance of what this used to be? I've got an idea. Yeah. So I have this Nelson's Greenbrier stuff that they released, right? Yeah. I also have the first whiskey they released from the same thing. Okay. Once it was actually aged, it oh, took yeah, in my yeah. office. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So we can actually compare. Here's what it was, what made it through, and what didn't. Let's do this! What a coincidence. Good time. Deb is making... Okay. Whiskey. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that distillate? What is that called? That's distillate, yeah. Distillate. This is the four shots that we're collecting right now. So what are four shots? That's pure methanol. Methanol? Is that the stuff that makes you go blind? Yes. Oh. That's the poison stuff. So you don't want to taste it. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't... Don't taste that. I shouldn't sneak some when you're not looking? Yeah. You do not want to booch this. <laughs> <laughs> So 
So what we're gonna do is Nelson. So what is Nelson? Just Tennessee. So do the story, Tennessee Distillery. Okay. Their new make and their aged spirit. Okay, so this is the same whiskey. In theory, that's the same thing. And this is age, what's the proof? 45.5% alcohol, 45% alcohol, 90 proof. So almost the exact same proof. Charcoal mellow, that would be the Tennessee whiskey. Yeah. Oh wow. Man, it's hard to believe that this is the same thing. Just yeah, smelling alone. That's what I'm saying. That's what's kind of amazing about moonshine. It's like, well, how like we're doing this distillery and we get something off the still and it's gonna have whatever characteristics it's ha it has. How do you possibly know what that evolves into? Is there a way to know like, uh, well, guava eventually turns into this thing with these kinds of barrels? You or... want the depressing answer? Oh, damn it. Repetition. Oh, all right. That's it. You just, you do it. Two years later, you find out that one wasn't good. <laughs> That's it. And then you do it this way. Two years later, that one turns out amazing. You go back, you look at your notes. Oh, here's what we did with that one. Right. Now we know that turns into this. When it comes to whiskey communities, mm -hmm. Moonshine is kind of the redheaded stepchild of whiskey. It's like, well, you know what? Well, it, because, it, here's why though. So remember we always have that, that speech about how um, a, a cheap, nasty scotch can often be a blended scotch. Oh, that's so different. But just because something is blended doesn't make it bad. Yeah. Right? So Moonshine, if you're gonna get a shitty, cheap thing, Often you're getting a flavored moonshine, and they're like apple pie or pumpkin moonshine, all these flavorings and things, right? Right. But there's also moonshine that is the new make spirit before it's aged, but it's got effort into it, right? Everything... That's a different classification in my brain. Okay. Like this, I wouldn't put this on par with someone doing a mason jar apple pie moonshine. This is the crafted spirit getting ready to go into barrels. Okay. And I think there's a whole interesting idea for a category of moonshine where the goal is to make interesting, unflavored, new make grain spirits. What I hear you saying is unflavored in the sense that... Taking a grain, mashing it, fermenting it, distilling it, full stop. Okay. You're not then adding things into that. What if, because we've seen Stillet do it, right. uh, he'll do like, uh, he'll put in like Some a coffee bean, or, or that's co called an infusion. Yeah, is what that's called. Okay, so it's not like you know an extract. No, he's not adding flavoring. Yeah, he's uh, infusing the spirit with something. Often, if you go to a bar, yeah. you'll see a giant jug with like peppers in it or something like that. Yeah, and what they'll be doing is they'll be making a pepper infusion. Okay. Uh, that they'll use in a cocktail or something. And those are actually really, really good. Usually, kind. Of, I'm gonna try this by the real quick. Just I, I smelled it. Unless you knew what you were looking for, this is the same as this, mm -hmm. save for time in a barrel. Yeah. Then you would be, you'd be hard pressed to be able to pick out, oh, yeah, that's just the unaged version. Yeah, absolutely. Deb is distilling right now. Mm -hmm. Let's take these down there because I have more moonshine questions. It's another hour. Okay, good. We're gonna check in on Deb because she's doing something relevant to my current interests. Emma's up there. Hi! The difference between moonshines, I always kind of assumed like it's so young, it has had time um, in the barrel to evolve. Okay, so I'm gonna try and experiment on you. Are you ready? All right, start over here, tell me what you think. Okay, all right, here we go. Wow, they're so different. Yeah, they are. It's almost like a, that's like a, a funky, Earthy, mm -hmm. and this is almost like a rounded off green apple. No, it's not green apple. What is that? It, it's a Jolly Rancher. Whoa, this one right here. It's one of those watermelon Jolly Ranchers. Yeah, that's what this is. This is like a clean, that fresh, one. like a clean, fresh, almost a peppermint type of deal. Mm hmm. This is. It's all these dark toffee, coffee, and yeah. dark, super like dark a, notes on a clear spirit. Like it's a, weird. Like a bitter dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. The nose smells bitter. Mm -hmm. A little sweeter than what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's candy. This one is the one that was really clean and fresh. Yeah, super bright. Yeah. It's like a pear. Yeah, it's, it's not as sweet as the others. It's like burnt toffee, bitter dark chocolate. There's definitely some sugary sweetness 
floating on top of all that. Mm -hmm. Wow. That first one that you said was kind of sweet and pepperminty light. Well, yeah. That's the Ranger Creek mash bill that ends up in their Ranger Creek bourbon. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, Texas whiskey, Ranger Creek. The second one you said, yeah, it's still sweeter than I thought, but it's a little bit pungent. That's the Nelson the Green Briar we were trying up in my office. Yep. The one that you thought was really nice and light and not candied sweet, right. but fresh tasting. Fresh and clean. Little is little the little. Hudson oh, New okay. Make Corn. Nice. Yeah. And this one is what Deb is making right now. Oh. Yeah. This one that's coming after you. You got character. Yeah. All right. Deb's making some moonshine with a sack. You said this was like a special weird thing that yes. we're not going to be able to duplicate. Yes. So this was um, a Saison. It was put in a wine barrel for six years. So now we're redistilling it. Yes. And so you're going to get all of these wood aged notes off of this thing, yeah. even though it's totally unaged. Yeah. So we proof this down a little bit, down to what those are. You want to do that? Yeah, let's yeah. proof it down. Let's take it to 50. Okay. And we've got, uh, I'm going to have to test how much this is. Hang on a second. It's going to take a little bit for that to rest. Now it smells more like the grain and less like the aging. Yeah. I'm curious to know how much is coming from the Saison and how much is coming from six freaking years in wine barrel. I don't know. That taste is uh, way more approachable. The nose is still so damn pungent. That's a funky adventure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's wild. Okay, well, in terms of are we able to make that kind of variety? Oh, yeah. We could way more than that. Way more than that because most people... Most people limit their moonshine releases. If they're doing serious stuff like this, like Ranger and Nelson and Hudson, yeah. they limit their moonshine releases to the new make of things they're already making. Yeah. Very few people are trying to explore the vast territory of all kinds of new makes that you have no intention of ever aging but are made up of different grain mixes and different blends of grains and different fermentation and yeast runs and all this kind of stuff. Okay. But can we, whenever we're doing whiskeys that are intended to be aged, mm -hmm. also set aside some of the unaged spirit, the moonshine, if you will? Yes. So people can have yes. like the before and after if they want to say, hey, so, this is the thing I've been waiting two years on. Here's where it used to be. So eventually, you know, a year and a half, two years from now, uh, maybe a year in Texas heat, and depending on the size of the barrels, and you guys choose, we will have a finished product yeah. and we'll still be holding back some of the new make and you'll be able to see side by side exactly what happened to it. Okay, so this is the beer. That's what she's distilled. That was aged six years in wine barrel. Probably not drinkable right now. <laughs> you could try it. <laughs> I mean, other than the alcohol content jacking the nose up, Yeah. I mean, this is 80% the same smell. It's more honey, it but is, that's it. It's more honey on the beer. It's not bad. Yeah? Yeah, you might actually like that. Oh! What's wrong with you? It's like vomit and bile with a finish of celery. It is celery. That's so weird. Like beer gets skunky after a while. <laughs> Deb's gonna make me a skunky moonshine. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So they sent us uh, 250 milliliter bottles. Yeah. And Texas doesn't allow 250 milliliter bottles. We need them to replace them with 375s, which was our is our plan now. So specifically, when it comes to whiskey sales, though. No, all alcohol. All alcohol. Okay. All hard liquor. You know what? They do allow 200 milliliters and 300 milliliters. <laughs> Why? I don't know. That's the dumbest thing in the world. Yeah, it really is. This is so stupid. So what are we going to do? We are going to uh, just get on tracker and take this out for the semi truck to pick up. The unveiling of... Are you ready? Yeah. It's a ram. So many barrels are going to be coming up and down there. Look. No. <laughs> you can just, you can yeah, just roll down it. You don't have to walk anymore. <laughs> It's so much more efficient. <laughs> 